Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The fabrication of an accurate and functional dye requires the same care and attention to detail that is given to tooth preparation and the taking of an impression. When the silver plated impression is returned from the laboratory, carefully check that each preparation has been adequately silver plated. The residual red utility wax may now be removed. This is carefully teased away with the number seven wax spatula. The remaining lead of silver can be sectioned at this time and removed. With a carborundum disc in a straight handpiece, carefully section away the lead, taking care not to damage the dye or the underlying rubber base. Any excess rubber at the periphery of the tray can now be cut away with the scissors. core and base of each die are formed in Duralay. To contain the Duralay and to reduce the need for sawing, each preparation is isolated with two sections of 7 16 inch stainless steel matrix ribbon. The sections are cut from a ribbon and are trimmed so that they fit slightly into the rubber base. One section is placed mesially and one section is placed distally. The correct placement of the strips is best illustrated graphically. In a cross section through the silver plated cuspid, note that the matrix strips fit close to the silver margins and they are aligned so that there is a distinct taper towards the base. The four strips have now been positioned and waxed into place. Note the way in which the strips taper from the base as was demonstrated in the graphic. Also note how closely the matrix strip fits next to the margin of the silver. Any residual gaps between the rubber base and the matrix should be waxed in with red utility wax. A dial pin is placed in the base of each die. It should be positioned in the center of each preparation. Once the dye is filled with Duralay, it is difficult to relocate the center of the preparation. To aid in finding this position, two lines are drawn. An imaginary line is drawn through the center of the preparation and where it crosses the buckle rim of the preparation of the tray, a line is made. Another imaginary line is drawn through the mesiodistal axis of the tooth, and a line is drawn on the matrix strip. Where these two lines, when projected, intersect is where we place the dial pin. 
There are three main sizes of dial pin, large, medium, and small. The large dial pins are generally used in molars. The small in teeth such as lower lateral incisors. For this exercise, we use the medium-sized dial pin. The core and base of each die is formed in Duralay. Duralay shrinks on setting, so it's important to add Duralay slowly. A little liquid, followed by a little powder. Each time, waiting for the liquid to wet all the powder and allowing a small amount of polymerization to take place. Duralay is added until the entire space created by the matrix bands is filled. Continue adding powder and liquid a little at a time. Duralay is added until a level base is formed. The Duralay is glossy at this point and is too fluid to insert the dial pin. Wait until the Duralay begins to lose its gloss before inserting the dial pin. Duralay is now just beginning to lose its glass. And at this point, the dial pin can be inserted. If the Duralay is the right consistency, then the dial pin will be maintained in position of its own accord. When the first die has been finished, we can start with the next die using the same process adding a little liquid followed by a little powder. The Duralay has now set. Check to see that there is a flat base to each die. If there is an excess concavity, this should be filled in with additional Duralay. To further stabilize each die, an anti-rotation groove is prepared in the base of each die, starting at the dial pin and extending towards the periphery of the base. This groove is cut with a number four round burr. Its shape and position is best illustrated graphically. This graphic shows the cuspid die with the dial pin posi in position and a completed groove prepared, extending from the dial pin to the periphery of the die. Note that there is no undercut in the groove. We are now looking in cross section at two grooves, each prepared with a round burr. The groove on the left has an obvious lip. When Velmic stone is poured to form the base, this will lock the die to the base. The die on the right, without the undercut, will readily separate from the base. One anti-rotation groove is completed. The second anti-rotation groove is prepared with the number four round burr, starting at the dial pin and working towards the periphery of the base. Groove is prepared to half the depth of the burr head.
excess wax around the matrix strip can be smoothed off at this time. The base of each dye is lightly lubricated with Vaseline, taking care not to block out any of the anti-rotation groove. The model is now ready to be boxed. The impression is now fully boxed. Small balls of red utility wax are placed over the tip of each dial pin. The impression is now ready to be poured up in Valmix stone. Once the Valmix is poured, it is allowed to set. When set, the boxing wax is removed. To prevent damage when removing the tray, it is best to section the tray. Pencil lines are drawn on the tray to indicate where the tray is to be sectioned. The tray is sectioned with the carborundum wheel in a straight handpiece. Care is taken to just cut through the tray and not into the model itself. The tray is completely sectioned and then it is levered off gently so as not to damage the model. In this particular case, the dies seem to be drawing out of the model together with the tray. And what we have is both dies left in the tray. The dies can easily be removed from the rubber base impression. The die is then carefully placed back in the model. The die is now ready to be trimmed. The objective of trimming is to clearly expose the margins of the die so that waxing and finishing procedures can be carried out easily. Gross removal of Durale is first done with a heatless stone. Care is taken not to damage the, the margin. Final trimming is done with a small green stone.
the delineation between the margin and the rest of the solder is not very clear, and this can make waxing rather difficult. So to clearly delineate the margin, we use a black Sharpie's pen and carefully mark the margin all the way around. The final step is now the removal of the pin. This is removed with a pair of pliers and with a twisting motion carefully pulled out. Now I have completed, trimmed and marked die. The dies are now ready for waxing. They are stable, easily withdrawn. And one can see the anti-rotation lock on the base of this die, as well as the anti-rotation groove in the base of the model, which will give us a very stable die. We are now ready to proceed with the waxing. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu slash license.